Next speaker is going to address you, and then he's going to introduce the next panel. Um, he's played a leadership role in the mobile industry for the past decade. He's the CEO of Impact Mobile Inc. He's the chair of MEF North America, and is the author of The Impulse Economy. He received the IAB Award for Industry Excellence in 2009, and he's here today to help you get a handle on the mobile commerce experience. Please welcome Gary Schwartz. There he is. Come on up. Thanks a lot. Break a leg, and then you can just bring on your panel when you're done. I shall do. Thank Enjoy. you. Thank you. So, um, so I've been asked to talk to you about uh, the, the sort of evolution of the store, or maybe the devolution of the mall. Um, I'm going to take you through a few slides, mainly pictures, uh, based on something I was asked to do with uh, Qualcomm in Barcelona at the at, at the Mobile World Congress uh, a few weeks back, and um, and if I do this, yeah. So so basically, when when I deal with retailers, when I deal with brands, it's such a busy place for them. They're trying to understand, obviously, how to get a handle on mobile connected devices. But at the same time, they're facing all these statements that they have to navigate. You know, you got, you got you know, Mark talking about the death of email. You're talking about Eric talking about the end of plastic. You know, Target walks up and says, hey, the, the store is a show, showroom. How do we deal with that? It's really hard for retailers to navigate that when email was the channel of choice. You know, plastic is how they live at POS, and the store is what they got to deal with. How did they evolve? And it's a huge challenge, and especially when you have all these pictures that show up in media. Uh, this, as you know, is, is the Tesco example from Korea. It's been bantied about a lot. The reality is it was a bit of a PR stunt for, for Tesco. They didn't have really a big bricks and mortar uh, positioning in, in Korea, and they had to battle the incumbents. So they did this thing where you could scan and order groceries to your home. Don't know how much lift they got. Um, but they got a lot of PR, but it got people thinking, and it got the industry talking about, you know, what is the store? And then, you know, I was down in Miami at the MEF event, and, and PayPal, actually it wasn't the MEF event, but I was down in Miami to listen to PayPal, and they were talking about Valentine's Day and how people could use, uh, you know, a, basically a piece of paper, a backlit panel, no digital screen here, to buy stuff last minute for Valentine's Day. And, and then I came out with my book and I said, gee, well, if the book store is on its way out and who knows how long paper is going to be here, um, or at least the ability to get paper into uh, a bookstore, um, why don't we put an NFC sticker on the book, an EField communication sticker, so that I can tap my, my phone and interact with the book and actually buy the digital version? Because that's a hell of a lot more important than the paper version. Um, which led me to talk about, you know, hey, well, if, if Barnes & Noble, or Borders is gone, and, and Barnes & Noble and Indigo are shipping more stuff for your living room uh, in, in the way of furniture and, 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 you know, odd things that you may want to buy for gifting, then they are books, then maybe the bookstore has a half-life, you know? Um, I, I, what I hear is that, you know, the, the publishers don't even ship books to the warehouse anymore because it gets lost. They ship it directly to the store because there are too many sofas lying around the warehouse to ship. So maybe you can have a panel and you can put it in Home Depot, you can put it in a, full, a movie theater where people can see a picture of the book and tap and use that as a way of interacting with the book and buying the book. And those are the kind of directions that folk are going in. You know, last minute gifting. I've got, um, I've got uh, prepaid cards. You know, those, those wonderful plastic things that you see in, in stores, the prepaid mall. You know, they're pegs and you, you buy uh, a little Johnny, uh, a, an iTunes card. Uh, those are archaic um, pieces of the ecosystem, but they are per square inch the highest revenue generator of any store in North America. And, but they're all going digital because at the end of the day, that plastic card is just a number. And if I want to gift it, well, then why am I buying a plastic card, which is just a number, when I can, you know, when now I have to go through the logistics of getting that plastic card to the little Johnny. So everything is moving digital. And so the, the idea of using the, those prepaid malls as a way of engaging with the consumers, so they can buy digital content in the store 
and then check out in the cloud is a huge thing. And so, uh, you know, in a situation like this, I can just scan. I'm only using a QR code here as a, a symbol of how you would activate. We're going to go into other ways of doing that. But then a frictionless checkout is in order. We're going to talk about that. You know, how you go from, hey, here's a product, I scan it, it goes into my inbox, so it goes into my, uh, you know, checkout uh, uh, cart, and I'm literally one click and I've paid and I've shipped it to the Lajani. That is the mobile experience that, that people are looking for. That's the holy grail. So everybody's saying, gee, things are evolving. It's all exciting. But really, when it comes down to it, the most exciting part of this whole discussion is George Costanza's wallet, right? Because everybody talks about George Costanza's wallet. You know, I mean, obviously, Google has sort of co-opted that whole image of this fat wallet and how can I optimize it and put it onto your phone. And I'm sure you've all had, you know, you've read about the, the, you know, the, the mobile wallet and, and what it means to George and all these things, which is great. But really, when you're talking about the mobile wallet, mobile payment, and this is Fahan, who, who's a buddy of mine from, from Discover, told me this over a beer. Uh, he said, mobile payment is a small subset of mobile commerce. And mobile commerce is primarily about shopper engagement and marketing. And what it comes down to is that it's not about George's wallet. It's about establishing a relationship with George's wallet. Because if you don't do that, you got nothing. Right? George isn't going to share his wonderful cowhide wallet with you unless he knows you. And the same holds true to the digital version of George's wallet. And especially when you're a retailer and you're being disintermediated by you know, a Kindle Fire that's coming right into the, the mall, into your store. It used to be, as you know, that you used to go home and politely shop online in the comfort of your home. Well, that's changed, right? So now I can absolutely, in aisle, use Kindle Fire. I can use my uh, you know, a price check uh, Amazon app to buy stuff. That's scary for retailers and brands. And so I, it, it, the, 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 the commitment to developing a relationship with George's wallet is even heightened. So with that in mind, how do you do that? So the shopper is in a store. The store has changed. The store used to be about limited aisle, right? Basically went to store and you got what you got. Right? You, you went, and they either had that color of the dress, or they had that product. And if you didn't have it, they'd try and order it for you. And then, obviously, concurrent with the store, you had the World Wide Web. Well, now you could have anything, because you could warehouse it in, I usually say Phoenix, but Sudbury. And, and you could warehouse it anywhere, because you could just ship it. And, and so it became endless aisle. You could get anything on the World Wide Web. And then, we had mobile, we thought, gee, that's, that's easy. We're just going to take endless, end, endless aisle, and we're going to shove it onto a small screen. It's going to change our lives. So, but it's different. Mobile is not about taking existing limited aisle or targeted aisle, sorry, uh, endless aisle. It's about understanding that it's a different experience. You're dealing with a different consumer. It's about targeted aisle. It's about understanding your needs right now while you move from point A to point B. and creating a compelling reason for you to engage and buy a product. And the reason that's so important is that only 30% of users are hitting the home page on a mobile device. They're going right into deep content. And so, you know, when, when you're trying to, to navigate a storefront, when you're trying to navigate your consumer in any, whether it be digital music all the way through to uh, Pampers, you don't want to have them hit the home page and navigate down a menu and then go down and say, I want the pink shoes and buy the pink shoes. Because you've lost in the path to purchase, you've totally interrupted intent. And you never want people to abandon intent. If you want something, you've got to let them have it, and especially on a mobile device, because that attention period the dwell period that you will interface with your phone is limited to 15 seconds. And if you speak to Steve Yankovic, who, who programs mobile for eBay, he will say that he designs his bidding process to be 15 seconds. 
the dwell time of a, a red light or, or, or the dwell time of an elevator ride because that's where I'm going in and out to making a bid. So when, you, when you're designing this, you need to count clicks to commerce. And you need to think more about mobile as less of a vertical. Hey, I'm going to build an app. I'm going to build something, and I'm, that's going to be another channel for me. And I'm going to have online, I'm going to have store, and I'm going to have a uh, catalog. No, you have to think of it as a horizontal. It will help you avoid the cross-channel disconnect that's killing most of our businesses, because this guy's going to come up and poach your customer, right? So a lot of stores are getting into showrooming. Remember two years back? Uh, you go into a store and you look for the blue shirt. Hey, can you help me with a flat screen TV? I need a PC. And you never find them. But when you found them, they maybe say, you know what, I think you should get the Toshiba. Now, now, nobody does that. You have more information with your phone than any blue shirt has in a Best Buy. And that's why Best Buy is ultimately going out of the bricks and mortar space. We know that. Every time a lease comes up with Best Buy, they're, they're abandoning their leases in many malls across the US. And the only way of avoiding this is to do clienteling. Clienteling is the ability to come up with, with your you know, iPad or, or some tablet and say, well, how can I help you? And Oh, well, you wanted the blue shirt. Well, we, we don't have that in the store, but here we have it online. Let me put that in your wish list. Oh, OK, great. Give me your email. Or give me your, uh, your uh, mobile number. I'll SMS you when that goes on sale. Or, and I'm curating the content from bricks and mortar right into the, the cloud. And I'm, I'm avoiding the cross-channel disconnect. That's the only way of mitigating the devolution of the store. And then we talked about activation. In order to start this process, you have to start a relationship with the, with the customer. You can't be in a situation where uh, you're uh, very intimidating, uh, being like this. I think. <laughs> um, um, uh, when, when, you're, when you're in a situation, uh, I'll give you an anecdote. You're in a bar, and you want to meet the person across the bar, really cute girl or cute guy. And you don't go up to them and say, hey, can I scan you? Uh, have you got a QR code? Um, gee, do you have a website I could go to? What do you do when you want to have a relationship with somebody in a bar? Buy a drink. Buy a drink, but then what happens when you leave the bar? I mean, let's say we're not going home on the first date. <laughs> uh, you ask them for their number. You put it on a matchbox, you pass it across the bar, and you have a chance to take them out for dinner the next night, right? Well, it's no different for brands, no different from media properties, no different from retailers. You have to develop a relationship. So whether you're texting, whether you're scanning, whether you're snapping an image and having that, you know, identify them, that, that product in the cloud, or whether you're tapping an NFC tag with near field communication, Ultimately, you need to start a relationship, and that relationship has to come back to their mobile number. If you don't have their mobile number, you don't have an onward going relationship with them. Yes, you may be able to sell them a product there, you may be able to tell them about something, but you want to drive conversion, you want to drive a relationship. Because you don't just want to have a drink in the bar, God bless you. You want to you have a relationship, you want to have a wedding ring, you want to have babies, right? That's what a mobile number will give you. And so, in that world, uh, Coke does 70, 20, 10. I think I'm finished. 70, 20, 10, which is 70% of what Coke does. This is not me. This is Coke. 70% of what Coke does, I mean, I work with Coke, but this is their philosophy. 70% of what Coke does is messaging and communications and building a relationship. 20% of what Coke does is mobile web and creating a colorful interaction. And 10% is innovation. And that's the way they go about business. And so results speak for themselves. These are some pro projects that I ran so I can give you the, the actual results. But there were lots of results like this. Hot Topic is a t-shirt company, sells music, uh, branding, and, 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 and concert tour uh, imagery uh, on the t-shirts. And they have 600 stores across the US. They're just coming, coming into Canada. They used to do email. Email started to... to uh, to underperform, and they attributed that to mobile. They went in and did some tests with A-B testing with SMS and, and email, and they came up with results that, that said that their SMS was driving 10 times the conversion of the email channel on the same offer, the same um, slice and dice demographic. And over a period of a year, we built up a 2 million uh, opt-in list of consumers that were loyalists and wanted to speak to our topic, and we drove 10 times the conversion of what they did traditionally into the cloud and in bricks and mortar. And the last slide is, and if you add color, if you go from SMS to product information to SMS to content to SMS to shopping, 
you know, a shopping call to action, to MMS, which is colorful SMS, like videos and other things that can lead to a shop now experience with Esther Lauder families. We're getting six times the amount of conversion than we did on SMS alone. So now you've got, you've got 10x just on SMS, and now you've got six times that with the right sort of ingredients in the call to action. And that is my allocated time. <laughs>